at Conwy, North Wales. That's all right, isn't it? Architectural salvage specialist Drew Pritchard is leaving base to investigate a family business in Berkshire that's closing down and could have some unusual items for sale. It's a good four-hour drive. Reading has been a centre of trade and industry since the 18th century, mainly due to its prime location in the Thames River Valley. Unlike many British towns and cities, Reading suffered little damage in the Second World War, leaving its rich architectural heritage intact. Right, T, we are in the historic town and we're here early of Reading. And we're here to see Jackson's Corner, which is a massive department store. I'm uh, Brian Carter, uh, I'm the managing director of E. Jackson and Sons Limited of Reading. It's a family owned department store and we've been on this premises here since 1875. Brian's great-grandfather, Edward Jackson, founded the store as a gentleman's outfitter, selling clothes and accessories. But after nearly 140 years of trading, the shop is closing down. Well, we're no longer in the um, shopping centre of Reading. We were, but it's moved away. We're left on our own. As business winds down, Brian is selling off the remaining stock and shop fittings. Whatever is left will go to auction. The buying opportunity here is massive. And to be perfectly honest, I'm going to try and buy every single shop fitting in the building. So I know what that means for me. What's that? Heavy shop counters. Heavy, sh exactly, heavy shop counters. Luckily, we've got the big checkbook with us. Three. Let's go spending. Look at that. I, tell you, I like the sign off the front, actually. Oh, there you go. Brian. Good morning. Drew. How do you do? Oh, nice, to meet, nice to meet you. Nice, nice to meet you. How, How you? do you do? How do you do? Thanks for having us here, Jackson's Corner. It's oh, oh, pretty... Welcome. welcome, thank you for coming. <laughs> um, where can we start? Top or bottom? Um, start at the bottom? Start, at, start around here somewhere. Oh, I see. Right. So, everything's potentially to go, is it? Yes, I think so. OK. First impressions of Jackson's shop is, one, it's huge. Number two, it's largely untouched from the 1920s to the 50s. Very, very interesting. Sad, but they're going anyway. So let's, let's try and buy as much as we can. Right, these are all interesting. So these would have been used for display of shoes and shirts, shirts, particularly or, you know, knitwear. Knitwear, okay. That's an unusual one, isn't it? What would be on there? I have no idea. <laughs> What's that? What is? That? I have no idea. <laughs> That's, That's my favourite. The spectacles. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have no idea. It's too many to check every single one. This collection of metal display stands dates from the early to mid 20th century. Cleaned and polished, they could be worth around 400 pounds. First thing you see was a great big box full of display stands. Um, have to ascertain what's in there very, very quickly. So I look and I think, well, there's 10 there I can see that are all right out of about 30. Would, would these be going as a job lot? I would think so. I think so. Yeah. OK, so what's this sort of ballpark figure if I took all of that lot? Because I reckon half a scrap and half a good. Oh. Just a starting point, that Oh, at least 200 for that. At least 200 for that lot. OK, for the lot. Yeah. All of those. Yeah. OK, as a first deal, yes. Mm. All right. I'll have a deal with you. All right, now. OK. Thank you, yeah. Take all of those. I think I bought them just for this one. There's a couple of other bits I've spotted over here as well, Brian. There's, um, this caught my eye when I walked in. So what about that one? Well, that's worth a lot of money. It's got the uh, wife front Wife front. OK, so yeah. what would you want for that one? Oh, about 700. Really? Yeah. Now, I've had one of these before. I sold it for just under £300. It was identical to that one there. £700? £700. Right. I think you pulled my pants down on that one. I was going to try to. It's just... No, that's too much. OK. I'm going to leave that one where it is. All right. I, I'm not used to haggling with customers. If they don't like the price, they... No. Uh. All right, so um, what else have we got in here, then? 
No, she's got a lot of these uh, shop counters around, varying ones. Um, OK, when were these put in, do you know? I guess in the 1940s, 1950s. OK. This glazed bronze shop counter was made locally in Reading in the mid-20th century. With its retro design, it might appeal to interior designers doing up a clothes shop. It could be worth £800. What, what sort of ballpark figure do you want for these? Well, they, they vary so much. Yeah, there's, um, there's some very good ones and there's some really not good ones. <laughs> so they're all over the place, aren't they? The main thing I want to buy here today are shop counters. I'm just trying to gauge the price because I want to do a bulk buy. Well, let's see. Let's, let's see. see. Let's see. There's a lot of them, so we can think about it, can't we? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. All right, so where? Through here now? Yeah, through here. OK. Oh, this way, yeah. That's the same as the one, the other one. Is that the same yeah. as the other one? Yeah, it's slightly wild, longer, I think. Yeah. It's another set of drawers sure. wider. Yeah. So these ones, what about the price for those two? I'm going to have to start giving you prices, aren't I, really? Yeah, I think so. I think that's probably mm -hmm. best. Mm -hmm. um, I think that you would end up with about £300 in your hand for every one of them, max, after auction fees. Um, so I'm prepared to give you 350 each. Well, I don't... I... I'd like to think you're not quite right about that. <laughs> I've been doing this a long time and I'm right. So uh, we're, we're, not, we're not really agreeing about this? No. OK, so for that one, I pay you another £400. No, no. So do you want to carry on going around? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. With no joy on the counters, Drew tries his luck on some haberdashery cabinets. These big cabinets at the back here. A uh, thousand for the four. Mm. Top architectural salvager Drew Pritchard is at Jackson's department store in Reading. So far, Brian has refused to sell any of his shop counters. These big cabinets at the back here. And it's not getting any better. No, I don't think so. No. One thing. I never do is give up. I will continue to try and buy them. And if I can't buy them, I'll come to the auction and buy them cheaper. But if Drew can't buy, at least he can do some shopping. What can we do for you? Can you do that? I'm trying to buy some of your shop cabinets. Ah! Yes, I think we should try yeah. a hat on. I like that one. What size hat am I, then, would I be? Uh, seven and seven and eighth. Seven and eighth. I'll try one. Got some over here. Elliot. That one. I think you're that one. That one. Try that. Try that one. Put it. Uh, What's what? What? How much are these hats? Normally seventeen ninety-five, but with a closing down sale, it is eight pounds ninety-seven, £8 which is 97. terrific value. That's terrific value. And it is made in England. Yes, well, for that reason, I'll have that. Magic. Thank you very much. My precious. Marvellous. That'll go on the list. Yeah, that's <laughs> personal purchase, that one. <laughs> that's quite nice. <laughs> Ten pound. Thank you. Have you ever worked one of these machines before? No. Wait, come on. Where, what come machine? On. I'll, show you. I'll show you what I do. OK. Right? Last of its kind. You put down there. Yeah. Right. You do it. See the hole? Yeah. You just pop it in the hole there. <laughs> oh, that's it. Into yeah. the hole. Really? That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Trained engineer now. <laughs> <laughs> and that's gone. That'll go and come back with the change as well. Really? Really? That's fantastic. Can I wait for the tube that's station? No. Can I wait for the tube station? Yeah. Right. So that's what I say. Eight ninety-seven. Nine. Ten. And yours it. Well, fantastic. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, my much pleasure. Appreciate. I love that. <laughs> that was wonderful. That was great. Right. So back to business now. We're just going to have to keep moving fast here. There's a lot of stuff to buy. I don't want Brian to go cold on me. This this big fella. What about him? 
Well, it's just a solid oak counter, isn't it? Solid oak top, yes, solid oak drawer, fronts, pine innards. This oak draper's counter was made in the UK and dates from the 1950s. Equipped with large drawers for storage, it was designed to hold rolls of fabric. It could sell for £1,500. Bit big. Bit big, bit chunky. Yeah. Give us a price. You never know. I can only say yes or no. Um, don't know. What are you thinking about? Um, honestly, 500 Oh, no, I don't think so. No, OK. <laughs> it's much easier if you just tell me the prices you want. What do you want for that one, then? 700 plus VAT. No. Think about it. In spite of their disagreements, the search continues. What's this place? This is the stock room. Ah. More of these. Oh, yeah. Steel wheels on them. Not in the best of condition. I quite agree with you uh, before uh, you say uh, so. No, I'm not, I'm not going to, actually. <laughs> I'm, not, I, I, I'm a fair guy. I'm, I'm fair with you. There's a... Uh... I'm trying to point out some of the uh, things I know wrong with them. <laughs> yeah, no, these are all right. They are what they are. That one's tied up with string. That one's slightly... These clothes rails were manufactured in the UK in the mid-20th century. Made of painted steel with nickel-plated hanging rails, each one is worth around £125. Can I buy these? And I'll buy one, two, three, four there. Mm -hmm. And there's... Is there any more there? On wheels? Those two. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, 200 pounds for the lot. So you're taking those, those four and those two? Yes. For two. 300 pounds each? 200 pounds. 200 pounds, all right. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. I bought a load of very early 50s clothes rails. They're very cool because they're small size. And what do people have now? Small flats. They look great in a room. Whenever I get them, they sell straight away. Another purchase made, but there's still the big one to talk about, the shop counters. I'm stood in front of you, guns loaded, I'm ready to go. You want all of them, I know. I want all of them? I'm not giving you all of them, no. OK. How about, can I buy half? No. Right, can I buy four? No. No? No. I'm getting nowhere with the shop counters. I think I'm being fair. I don't think I'm being too hard. Well, I want to buy all of it. <laughs> I'll buy all of it. I'll buy every single counter in the building, now. No, you won't. I'm trying to buy him across the board. If he wants to go to auction, and he's not going to get the money he thinks he's going to get. Reality. Reality, he's not going to get that. Let's go on a bit more. Right. Oh, you don't trip over this. this is good. I think this is the last room we used to have to look at. That's not ours. What about this one? That is, yeah. Is that yours? Mm. Oh, he's got no head, poor chap. He's lost his head. And yeah. a hand. And a hand. Yeah. Oh, that's a shame. One thing I absolutely love buying is any articulated figures, even if it's just a hand or a leg or a foot or anything at all. OK, what, what about that there, sir? Well... One arm, Jack? You won't be interested in that cos it's too damaged. No, I like him anyway. Uh, any articulated figures I like. This mannequin was manufactured in the late 1950s. It's made of wood, cardboard and papier-mâché. Even in its dilapidated state, it could sell for £450. He's a bit beaten up. He'll clean up, though. He'll clean up. Might even be able to find He's a hand He's seen in better it. days. Haven't we all? <laughs> 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 um, what would you like for him? Oh, I promise I don't know. Well, all right. Say 225. 225. I will give you 225. Okay. There you go. Can't shake hands with him, really. Well. <laughs> 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 okay, so we got Fred. 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 Um, poor Fred. Poor yes. old Fred. Lost his head. <laughs> <laughs> and his hand. And his hand. Yeah. So the only, thing we're, the only thing we've stuck on is the big oak chest, isn't it? Yeah. That big long big, one. Big long yeah. One. 700 pounds. Done. So, All right. you're a hard man. All right. Kids can't eat tonight. Cool. Let's get loaded up. 
Today, I wanted to buy an awful lot of things, but I could only buy a few. I really wanted to buy 30 haberdashi cabinets, but I couldn't, and that's the way it goes. Well, I, I think he's done very well. well. I think I'm quite happy. Drew's picked out a few things he's interested in. Not all the things I wanted to sell. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't want to sell all the things that he wanted. OK, we're done? Yeah. <sighs> I'm exhausted. How are you looking for? Oh, took it out of me, that. Done? Yeah. Well, did you like that? Yes and no. We got enough stuff to make it worth our while. Uh -huh. Okay, more than worth our while. Right. But the reality is that we should have bought every single one there, and I tried. I really tried. So I'm a little frustrated to buy it. After a long, tricky day, it's back to Conway. <laughs> We've got a new friend. <laughs> Another member of staff. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Fantastic. Fred. So we've got two now, got matching. 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 It's, uh, it's got missing a hand. He's missing a hand. Take it. Let's just straighten him out. He's oh, got to touch like that over morning, isn't he? Yeah, that's what I sound like getting out of bed. He's a big fella. <laughs> Gavin gets to work on the display stands, and Drew and T head back on the road to follow up on the holy grail of Picks, a privately owned country house. It's a five-hour drive south to Haywards Heath in West Sussex. According to local legend, the town was named after a highwayman called Jack Hayward. It became popular in the Victorian era when the railway came through to the Brighton coast. Today, it's a sleepy commuter town. So, onward. Onward, we need to buy more. We are uh, in uh, West Sussex, which is the, more or less the British capital of antiques. So we do need to go and buy more, 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 and lots more. I'm Andrew John Stevenson Clark, and I live with my family here at Board Hill Garden. Uh, Board Hill was a house built in Elizabethan times by Stephen Board and bought by my great-grandfather, Colonel Stevenson Clark, in 1892. And he bought it because he wanted to plant a botanical collection that is now the best set of champion trees in the country. Uh, we're expecting Drew to come along and uh, have a little rummage around, either in the house or in the barns outside, uh, and just see what we might have had sitting there for, for many years. John. Oh, nice to meet you. Welcome how to Board Hill Garden. Nice to meet you. Yes. Hello. 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 Yes, how are you? Uh, hello. Thank you. Hello. 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 Yes. Hello. Yes. Great. So, should we go in? Well, we might we'll make a start. Here, yeah, it's yes. a bit yes. too cold yes. to be standing around, yes. isn't it? Yes. Thanks. Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? Well, it's warmer. <laughs> it's warmer. <laughs> that's right. it's warmer for <laughs> sure. For sure. Wow, that's quite. That is quite a chimney piece, isn't it? Yes. You've got loads of nice furniture here. Look at that. That's quite a... God, that's an early one, isn't that, it? That, that, was, that was given by Grand Duke, Arch, Grand Duke Ferdinand to my great-great-grandfather, um, how he managed to... Not Franz Ferdinand. Yeah, yes. Really? Yes, yes. yes. The, um... <laughs> Lots of nice bits. I like the, the fact that you've got a, uh, a carriage, carriage in yes. the house as well. Yes, well... <laughs> um, I'm assuming now, I've got to ask, there's nothing in here that's for sale? Uh, there, there isn't really, no. Really? The, the family um, started uh, 250 years ago, we, um, and uh, because of that, we had houses all around the country. Mm. But over the years, they get sold, and then stuff appears here. <laughs> Can't all fit it in so here. So it's not just garden <laughs> furniture, then? There's all sorts in there? Oh, there's all sorts of stuff, yes, yes. That right, sounds good. I, I'd really, really quite like to go there now. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yes, good. OK. <laughs> so, yeah, please well, lead on, show us where we're going. Go again. Yeah. Thank you. When I first came here, I thought, oh, I'm going to look at some old garden benches and some garden furniture, and that's that. But no, I'm going to look at furniture now from several houses, including two large ones in London. All of a sudden, the game's totally changed, and it's really exciting. Salvage Supremo Drew Pritchard is visiting Board Hill, an Elizabethan manor and 19th century garden in West Sussex. Lots of nice bits. I like the, the fact that you've got a, uh, a carriage, carriage in, in yes. the house as well. Yes, well. <laughs> 
Having looked around the house, it's time to head outside to rummage through the barns. So which one into this one here? Yeah. Shall I open her up? Yeah. Oh. In this one first? Yeah. yeah okay. So this is just, this is from all different houses now? Yes, yes. Fishing rod? Fishing tackle box. <laughs> yeah. T, have you got a torch on you? I have. You've got two rods in there. Yes. yes. Is there any yes. rods in this one? Oh, yes, loads. Could we oh, you lift, lift that one out? Yeah. Uh, it's going to be tricky. I know a little bit in. about <laughs> fishing, <laughs> fishing stuff. What I do know is it's massively collectible. Oh, yeah. quite good leverage. You've got the heavy end, T. Yes, <laughs> a bit of a reach. There you go. Yeah. Try, put it on the... On the floor? Yeah, that's, put that on that edge on there. would be great. There we go. Ooh, lots. All fly fishing rods, yeah? Well, not necessarily. Um, one of them, for example, is a Nile perch fishing rod. Ah, so you is know it? what you've got in here. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> is there any hardy and the, and the stuff in line. here? Uh, there could be, yes. I think there may well be. Um, but it would be a case of having... case of opening every yeah, single yeah, one. Yeah, that's too much. Colonel Ralph Clark, MP. That's my grandfather. That's great, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> OK, well, I'm not going to open every single one. No, of course not. Yeah, typical bloke behaviour, this. I need yeah. fishing rods, so I need 20. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I need this one, well, darling. Right. Yeah. 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 OK, yeah. I fish yeah. without it. Yeah. 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 And you never know when you need a fishing rod. Yeah. No. Yeah. This, this, this yeah. box there, as well, it's better than the norm as well, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. OK, no, let's go on to the next one, then. Yep, yeah. OK. This, this is quite interesting. This ah, is nice. a, um, a bed that, uh, because the family's been in shipping for 250 years, yeah. um, this is a, uh, a captain's bed for a ship, a sailing ship. Uh, and if you look over there, you will see that you've got the, um, the footboard. footboard yeah. um, and then these are the side ones. Ah, so it's got a rope mattress. Exactly. Yes. Well, it would have had a rope Would have had a rope mattress. mattress. Yes, exactly. Fascinating. Yeah, shipping was a, was a huge thing in your family. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The first room I went into in the barns where they have all the furniture stored, there was a look like a sort of 17th, 18th century oak single bed from a boat that would have ropes through it. That was interesting but not desirable. Mind the hole. How many holes are in the floor? It's amazing, Nick, isn't it, this yeah. barn? Yeah. That state of the art. Yes. <laughs> 1979. Yeah. Okay, so where's the, where yeah. do we go through there? The other side, yeah. yeah. Mind your head over yeah. here. Find the hole in the floor there, too. I like this. Yeah. Was this from your kids? Yeah, they, they, well, this, I used that when I was a boy, and, and no. my, I'd be one end and my brother would be the other end. Went upstairs in the barn and immediately saw this fantastic looking child's rocking toy. So I don't want to, obviously, it would be wrong of me to ask how old you are, but how old is this thing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 well, about 60 years old, let's about say that. 60 years old. <laughs> yeah, this child's twin rocker dates from the 1930s. A cross between a rocking chair and a seesaw, it would have been ideal for children up to the age of eight. It could sell for £180. Is that for sale? Uh, it could be. It could be. Yeah, it could be. Um, 50 quid? Uh, no, that's not tempting, is it? I can see. It's, it's, it's nearly tempting. It's nearly it's tempting. It's 60 pounds. Uh, OK. Yeah. 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 OK, we'll have that. Yeah. We're putting together a collection of toys now for next Christmas, and this just will sit really, really well with them. So it's absolutely perfect. That's lovely. Yeah. What a great little thing. So some little kid's going to have a great time yeah. in that. Yeah. I may be here some time. <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> oh, oh, my sure. She's a bit harmless. Yeah, it's a he. Is it? Yeah, yeah it's a he. <laughs> that's a he. Don't that's worry, I'll explain it to you later yeah. in the van. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Thank Couple you. For that. Nice. Uh, you don't have the other one to that, do you? If we did, it would be somewhere over there. <laughs> yeah, we'll be with it. This wrought iron table lamp was made in the UK around 1900. Wrought iron has been used for decorative purposes since the Middle Ages. 
and in the late 19th century, it was widely used for household items. It could be worth around 200 pounds. There was a box full of broken table lamps, and inside there, there's one wrought iron, beautifully made. The condition was great. Paint was worn off it, not been rewired, um, and it had the original toggle switch on the bulb holder at the top. But what it did have was a real tall size, and I like that. But that, that's of interest. That would be something I'd want to buy. What would you want yeah. for that one? Name of the um, now. What would you pay for that? Uh, 75. Uh, that's, that's fair. I'd, I'd rather pay 200 to 250 for a pair. Yeah, quite. So much yeah, more, yeah, so much more desirable. Yes. But it's quite nice. It's got a bit of age to it. It's got yeah, a good look. Yeah. So that would be that's tops for that one. OK, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll improve on something later, I hope. Let's try. Yes. We can put a package, we can put a package <laughs> yeah. together. Yeah, He's not right, going to yeah. be. I'll He's put him back now. <laughs> <laughs> the odd hole here and there. That's <laughs> yes. Always a worry, that. Oh, hello. That's of interest as well. These wooden steps were manufactured in the late 19th century made of polished birch with mahogany trim. They would have been used in a library as a hop-up. Restored, they could sell for about 250 pounds. Okay. This is a little bit utilitarian, but it's still got a... People, these are very desirable. Yeah, I think conditions probably just, again... Well, it gives you an opportunity for restoration. We can. We can. It'll go with the other 9,000 things we've got <laughs> <laughs> yeah. to fix. And at the top of that, Drew, you'd feel like a normal person. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, God. And then he really wouldn't get under the beam, would he? No. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what's that worth to me? It's a little library step or kitchen step. In that condition, £60 pounds in that condition. That's exactly the price I thought you were going to say. Yeah, it's yeah. about right yeah. for that. Yeah. Yeah. 60 Yeah. I'm happy so if we said yeah. 60 for that, so yeah. what did we go to on the lamp? I went to 70, 60 or 70 was it on the lamp? Uh, so, I mean, if you were... If, if, if you went up to 80, I'd be happy on that. Yeah. Fine. Yeah, we'll take yeah. those. Yeah. We'll take both of those then. Okay. So 60, yeah. 80. Brilliant. Nice. Classic okay. little country house yeah. bits. Yeah, yeah. When you come to a house like this, you do try and buy as much as you possibly can because they don't open their doors to you every day. Um, and they don't open their sheds to anybody ever, usually. So I'm very lucky to get in. So to buy three things, it's OK. Yeah, I'd love to have buy, you know, 20 or 30 more items. But it just wasn't there today. But you never know next time. It's been a really interesting day. I mean, having both the guys come along with their... I mean, they got a great experience of looking through all sorts of things in all sorts of places. Um, uh, I th I'm sure he's got some value out of uh, what he's bought, uh, and he will have fun restoring them. Um, and it's got to be a bargain that both people like, so we do. Yeah. How are you doing, T? Yeah, we're good. Done? Yeah. Finished? Nice, easy one for you. It was. Was it just three things? Yeah. Done. And they went, as dirty as normal. <laughs> <laughs> I specialise in things that are barns covered in dirt and cobwebs. Yes, and I noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks thank you. again. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you. Thank you as well. Thank, thank you. you. See you thank again. You. Bye. Oh, blimey. That was chilly. Get them heaters on. That was a nice day out in the countryside. It was. It was a lovely place. Anyway, wonderful place, wonderful gardens, and uh, really nice guy, Andrew. Really like. Oh him. yeah. The following day, Drew and T are staying on the road and heading north for a two-hour drive to Lower Weedon in Northamptonshire. This small community just outside Northampton once played a big role in British life. During the early 19th century, it was home to the arms depot of the British Army. In the event of a French invasion, it's rumoured the royal family would have been evacuated here. Right, today, T, we're on our way to see a guy called Neville Griffiths, a uh, long-time dealer, uh, been around for years in the architectural antiques world. Well, what he's doing, he's having a very big auction. He's retiring. Right, and he's going to clear out all his barns, sheds and shops. Um, he's given us a call and said, look, come on down, you know, just have a quick look before the auction. Perfect. Hello, my name's Neville Griffiths. I uh, deal in antiques, architectural antiques and salvage. Everything is for sale. 
Um, but whether I actually do sell it, um, it's always a difficult thing. If you say the right things and I'm comfortable, I'll sell it. One thing old dealers do is they tuck the best bits away. Right? A little secret hoard. Yeah. Like some people have that we all know. Yeah. Well, me. Yeah. I have got my own secret hoard, I must admit. And it's not for sale yet. Do you know what I'm looking forward to? What? Working with an architectural antique dealer who knows what he's doing. <laughs> Hello there. Drew, how are you doing? Hiya. Nice to meet you. Hello. Hello. What's your um, name? This is Hugh Merlin. Hugh Merlin? That's a hell of a handle. That's great. Oh. Um, so, what, is there stuff for us to have a look around there in is. here There's as well? There is. There's a few things in here which... Uh, may be of interest, yeah. Well, may be of interest, but um, anyway, have a look and see if there's okay. anything for well, you. Well, you never know. Anything good in here I should be looking at? If there's anything, you just... Um... OK. I collect these. How do you? Pensions. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. quite an unusual one, actually. That is. We I... find them on Welsh farms, to be honest with you. Dairy pots. They're worth very little anyway, but they just look... No, nice, they've got they? decoration, yeah, aren't yeah. they? That's a bit of nouveau stuff. I was looking at that through the window when we arrived. Oh, uh, that's... It's the condition's not great, but it's also, it's complete. This embossed antique fireguard was manufactured in the UK circa 1900. Made of copper with wrought iron supports, it only requires minor restoration. It could fetch around £280. Right in the window of the shop, he's got a particularly nice, very, very pretty small fire guard. What I do like about it was the patina on it was particularly good. The copper had gone in that wonderful blue-green all over. It's handmade, it's English, and it's in that sort of crossover between arts and crafts and Art Nouveau. What would that cost me, then? 45. 45 quid. What do you think? Is that a yes? Yes. Yes, there we are. Thank right. you. There we are. Nice one. There you go. First deal done. Right, so... So where's, where's next, then? You've got a back room through there as well. You can have a look. Ah. Yeah. Is this stuff in here for sale? Uh, some of it is. What about this thing? Well, I always said it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. And I've had... Antique dealers trying to get that off me yeah. when it was up in my storeroom. Yeah. I was really surprised to see this rusticated stump work, whatever you want to call it, table. It's got a fabulous top. This is all individual pieces of wood done, twigs, to make that pattern in a small octagonal top. This British oak table was made in the 1870s. It's an example of arts and crafts, a Victorian movement inspired by folklore and traditional craftsmanship. Restored, it could be worth six hundred pounds. You got a bit of woodworm in it. It's got a lot, but I'm not too fussed about that, you know. Well, that can live with that. Nice. It's what it is. It still exists. Love the top. So yeah. naive. I can get that restored. So that's no problem getting that. Getting that right. I want two fifty for it. So that might kill you. Two fifty. Two fifty. Any negotiation? It depends on what else you buy. All right. You know, because I, I might sell you something else which I didn't want so much for, make myself feel better. Mm. If that makes any sense. 250 sold? Go on then. Yeah, you know that's a good deal. Yes. Well, if, if we can find two things like that in here, I'm very keen to see your barns. Dealing with Neville, dealer to dealer, is very straightforward. And he's an interesting guy and a typical dealer because he's got lots of good little bits that he knows everything about and he knows why these broken bits are important and they are important. It's off to see the other storage areas. Big enough to hide a few bits, isn't it? <laughs> There's a few. Uh, yes, one or two. Where do we start? Okay, so where are we best going into? Into here? Um, well, you have a look round and, and wherever you want. This is like architectural salvage Disneyland. 
I don't know if that's <laughs> No, in a good way. <laughs> in a good way. All the attractions. Go on, see you shoot through. I'll follow you. Ta. Although the shed is overflowing with stock, Drew isn't seeing anything he wants to buy. That's a good mirror you're handling there. Yeah. No, it's too good. All your stuff's too good for me. <laughs> that bed's curious. I isn't sold it? 50 beds to a dealer in Bristol a little while ago. But there we are. That's the only one I've ever seen that size. It's, it's the right width. This unusual wooden bed was made in Austria around the beginning of the 20th century. The curved decorative lines mark it as an example of the Art Nouveau style. It could fetch £1,200. Uh, I'm going to do something rotten now. I'm going to give you a bid on it. You give me a bid. Salvage specialist Drew Pritchard is in Lower Weedon in Northamptonshire at Neville Griffiths Antiques. This is like architectural salvage Disneyland. <laughs> I've done it fast. <laughs> no, in a good way. Drew wants this rare Art Nouveau bed, but will his offer be enough to tempt Neville? I'm going to do something rotten now. I'm going to give you a bid on it. You give me a bid. Don't be I silly. I don't often do that. No, but don't. I'm not going to be silly. No. 350. That is silly. <laughs> <laughs> I like your honesty. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be lucky I didn't swear. <laughs> 450. You will not buy that bed anywhere. Oh, it's just beds. I'd never have any luck with it. You know, when you buy something, that, that just doesn't even have you. to be a bed. That could. That could Divide the wall. A, it could be a screen in the middle. Oh, of it'll a... just look like a bed in the middle of a room. No, it wouldn't. It would. I think the, that, 400 could, is a fair price. I think 400 is. You're having a good deal if you get it at 400. But you've made me a bit depressed because you've not really noticed much. 425. <laughs> and it's I have yours. noticed loads. 425. 425. Right, that'll do. Thank yeah. you. I bought something I never really buy. And it's an old bed, and I think it's a continental bed, and it's in really nice condition as well, and it's very unusual. And the one good thing about it is it's the right width. It's a modern width. Most of the old ones were very narrow. Cool. Fancy selling that bed for 425 quid. <laughs> I'm actually selling it. Why have I just bought a bed for 425 quid? Yeah, well, that's. Uh, <laughs> I've never done any good with lights. Oh, really? No, no anything that really glass, works out it? for me, to be no, honest. It gets broken. This opaline pendant light was made in the UK in the 1920s. The reading pattern on the shade makes it an unusual find. It could be worth £200. Yeah, look, that's a nice old one, isn't it? Yeah. How much is that, then? I don't know. You tell me. Uh, you don't have I'm... to be silly on no, it. No, what I normally pay is 400 400. <laughs> <laughs> what I'd normally pay trade for one of these would be a fair price, would be 40 quid. I knew you were going to knock Mallow off the end. I was, yes, yes, I was wrong you, there. 400 quid is a big drop. There was quite. <laughs> yeah, um. Yeah, 40 quid. Yeah, that'll be. Good. Deal, thank yeah. you. Something we buy all the time, lights, got thousands of them, 40 pounds, so that's what we pay for them in that condition. Nice, easy purchase, we'll sell quickly. Right, T, don't break it. How many bits do you want it in when we get back? <laughs> <laughs> Just one, please. Just one bit. Okay. Just the one piece. I used to say, if you can lift that up on your own, you can have it. it. You can have it. <laughs> Where's Gav when you need it? Yeah, Gavin. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We've got a lad who can do that. He's just not here. There's one last thing Neville wants to show Drew. Yeah, you've got some nice bits in here, Nev. So. This. I got it's an arbor. It's an arbor. It's a fruit, fruit arch, rose arch. Came from a big country house garden. What age was the house? It was a Regency house. I mean, yeah. This is all. I mean, this is a rare thing. It is. Have you got all of it? Uh, I've got all I've got here. Yes. There's more there, isn't there? Yeah. I think there's about 17. 17 lengths. Let's pull these two out. Well, that's that. We've got the bottom here. Yep. While you're doing that, I'll yep. go and get some of the spheres. All right. That's that. Like that, yeah? Yeah. Is that really what I think it is? You know, I thought it can't be. It can, must be some sort of estate fencing yeah. or something. Yeah. Ooh, exciting tea. <laughs> ah, OK. I say spheres, they're not. They're, no, they're, they're, they're like casting. like a collet. Yeah, it's casting. These wrought iron rose arches date from around 1820. 
they would have been used to display and support flowers or fruit plants in a country house garden. If the complete arch is intact, it could be worth £4,500. How much for the lot? 1,500 quid and no deal, no knockdown. That's the best price I'll give you. Sold. I love that. Thank you very much. But you might have to get some of these cars. That's all right. Superb. That's what I want to find every day. <laughs> well, you, if you and find, I won't it, find if you, that every day, I, I, I would bet you the same amount of money you won't find I won't another, find another one. one. Better get in there, aren't we? Yeah. Which ones do you want to do first, T? Do that lot first, and then we get a space to do then. Let's do it. With the deal done, Drew has to claim his prize. And that means untangling the remaining arches from the undergrowth. When we start pulling it out, and Neville's going, oh, there's 17 of those. Well, I thought there were 17 individual sections. There's not the 17 arches. So that makes it roughly 120 foot long. It's a rare item and a star item. You don't often get them. Roll That's it to it, me. Roll it to you. Okay. Yeah. I'll let you do it. It's got no handle on it now, just to make it safer. Thank you. But it's hazardous work, especially for two. Bloody hell. Uh, what's your eye? There's another bit in there. Whoop. Ow. Hang oh, on go, a minute, go, go. hang on a minute. What have you done? It's stinging that in the eye. In the eye? <laughs> it's got, you can see it's gone on your eyelid. Is it? Yeah, it's well, just right in the corner. Right. You might have to have you put down. <laughs> don't rub it, don't rub it. I think uh, when we get back to the office after this week's travels, they're going to probably be confronted with one of the weirdest batches of stuff we've ever bought. And do you know what? I really oh, like that. You've been this it. for years, so they'll be happy. <laughs> it's a love affair with all this stuff. You fall out of love with it because you've had it such a long time, but as soon as somebody shows interest, you're back in love again. So there, you have to have a balance, but once it's gone, it's gone, and I'm quite happy to see things go. Um, and it's been a bit of fun. Financially, today has been good, but it won't be good quickly. It'll be good in a month. Um, not everything can be turned around fast. I weigh a bit when you... We then bought an Opaline light. We're always able to sell those. Easy sale for that one. Bit of work, but extremely satisfying. And we're going to save something really quite beautiful and rare. Come on the telly. Yep. Drew's bought some things which I didn't even know I had. But the good thing is, he recognised that I have some really good things here. To some people, this is just a pile of junk. But to others, like he said, it's an architectural Disneyland. Thanks very much. Fantastic. I'll call in on you. And so good to meet you at last. And I want to buy off you. <laughs> Thank you. I want the same deal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And good luck. When this auction happens, I'll be here. Good. You I'll get, let you know. You get the same Thank deal you. if you cut all the brambles in his yard. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Thank Thanks. See you. Bye. in time for the rain. Um, hey? Hey? Didn't know we'd be doing horticulture when we were collecting <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Indiana tea. <laughs> <laughs> but no, a good day. Neville, top bloke. Yep. I like him. I like him a lot. We've got a full van. There's profit in all of them we got. But no, back to, uh, back to the office and uh, see what they all got to say. Where's the boss? Yeah. Hiya, <laughs> oh, you're right. Hello. Oh, yeah. Look who's here. Bing! There you are. Oh, Enzo. Hello. Hello. Hey. You had a good... Yes. ...good journey? A lot. Very good. Oh. Oh. We bought a lot. Best news is you're getting a log burner. <laughs> That's the first thing, I think. <laughs> T doesn't understand <laughs> how desirable this is. It's unbelievably, really? yes. Just, like, tramp out was one of the things that drew me. It's got a little it? bit of that it in it. I mean, look at the top. It's unbelievable. So it's English, it's 19th century. It is riddled with woodwork. The tree table, beautifully weathered, beautiful colouring, quick 
fiddle with the side bits, etc. And uh, that's a really lovely item. This, though, find of the month. There's a lot of it, whatever it is. There's <laughs> a lot of it. We'll need two of these out, won't we, see? We stand. Oh, I know it. Get another I one. I thought it was a gazebo. No, it's not. Any nuts and... and this was buried. We had, to, we had to get all Indiana Jones. Oh, did you? Big knives and machetes and hacking it all out like that. Oh, to get it out. Right, let's go. Up we go. Whoop. Oh, you want up? What were you doing? Right. So oh, this. This is, lovely. Get one side this is English. Yep. Lake Regency, wrought iron garden arbor, completely original. 38 sections, making a piece of approximately 120 foot long. Gosh. And it all matches, and it's not been messed with. Later, Alex the French polisher puts the finishing touches to the arts and crafts table. Actually, looks quite nice, wax. And before long, it's ready for Drew to inspect. Um, the table has come up basically how I expected it to be, um, which is when I first saw it, I knew it would come up this well. The top is just superb. That twig work on the top here is, is really good. Just the colour makes it really, that where that's come through, that's actually better than I thought. Because well, that literally looks like old gold leaf on a frame. Yep, over the moon with that, and I should imagine it will be gone within the month. Thank you.